Disclaimer! What Have You Done Father was developed by a single person with a limited budget. It offers a narrative-focused experience with a strong emphasis on storytelling, exploration, and cinematic elements. Although there are a few light scares and some exploration involved, the horror aspects of the game are presented through the disturbing plot, unsettling imagery, and the atmosphere. Please be advised that the game includes violence, nudity, flashing lights, and disturbing imagery. It also delves into sensitive, religious, and moral themes. Hello everyone! Welcome to What Have You Done, Father? And I don't know what this game's about. Prologue. Oh my god, there's so many chapters. We're just gonna get straight into it though. This is What Have You Done, Father? As you can see, it's like a religious kind of thing. In shadow. Just like doing it, sir. Through caverns black. A tale of war in darkness told. Beneath the gaze of fine eyes, a demon speaks with the mournful sighs. Oh, fallen shepherd, stained in shame. The sheep? Who's killed the sheep? Father! Is this what Father's done? Father is sacrificing lambs to be the devil. What have you done, father? No. He is becoming... Uh, what's, it, what's it called when you... Uh, uh, like, believe in God, but then go against it? The Judas? Is that the thing? I don't know. A long time ago, somewhere in Europe. Hello. Oh, I'm in a sin I thing. have no sins to confess. I've come here to speak the truth. My conscience is as clear as a child's. I have been framed and almost driven to insanity. But I am resolute in my faith. Oh Lord, that cursed day. It began like any other. Nothing could have predicted the horrifying events that would unfold later that night. Okay. So I am father. A few days ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but... Hello? Hello. Is this Father Matthias? It is. Yes, speaking. How may I assist you? This is Marina Constanza. I'm a member of your parish, though I think it's unlikely you know me. I'm not much of a churchgoer. Oh, it may seem weird for me to come out of nowhere and ask for your help. I'm not even a good Christian. Banish the thought. God, in his infinite mercy, takes care of all his children. Mm. Oh, please, tell me more about what's troubling you. Thank you, Father. You're too kind, but I'd rather not talk on the phone about my situation. I'd like to meet you in person if possible. It is a, well, a delicate matter. Ooh, Can I come okay. by? I live not far from there. Well, certainly. I've just finished my prayers and I'm about to prepare some tea. Do you have any preferences? You're too kind. A cup of strawberry tea would be lovely. Strawberry right. tea? then <clears throat> I'll be expecting you. If I'm not available, Felix, one of my students, will assist you until I return. Thank you. I'll see you soon. God bless, and be safe on your way here. No. Okay, dokie, here we are. I recall it well. It was a few days before Christmas, just I have after to make the sure she requested. The distant sound of the organ in the nearby chapel filled the air as I readied myself to meet Lady Marina. Okay. Wait, is my sin gonna be that me and Lady Marina have a um have an interest in life together? I forgot. Yeah. Go to the kitchen. Hello, Felix. You okay?
God bless. I'm enjoying what might be the final day of this year with beautiful weather. I just returned from a leisurely stroll through the park. I heard on the radio that a massive STORM is approaching. Perhaps even tonight. They're forecasting it to be the most powerful one in the last few years. I just hope it doesn't wreak havoc. By the way, Father Josiah mentioned Josh struggles with severe migraines. Are you feeling better? Is everything alright? I'm fine, it is just the weather. I see. Lately, the winters have indeed become incredibly unpredictable. One day it's warm and sunny, only for the next day to bring rain and a sharp drop in temperatures. Ah, I would love to gossip. How I would love to gossip over tea. Make sure you don't put too much sugar in it. Unfortunately, I have to help the sisters at the con convent with gluing the new wallpaper. I'll be leaving in an hour. Okay, well, get out then. Go away. Who are you? I don't want to talk to him. I need my strawberry tea. Where's my strawberry? That's just for decoration. Full of dust. Where have I put my kettle? Adding this back door to the rectory was a wise choice. Where have I put the kettle? But that one's dusty. Mate, why are there so many bloody teapots? Hibiscus. Europe is currently grappling with a disturbing surge in violent crimes. Extensive research has been conducted to shed light on this disconcerting reality. While we may express our concerns and diligently prosecute the perpetrators, the justice system is actively seeking innovative approaches to prevent these violent acts from occurring in the first place. Yeah, front, uh, father, my fire smarter. A pleasure strawberry tea. Pack for you as a token of gratitude. Oh, thank you. Belief that they possess the upper hand and the right to seek revenge against those they perceive as weaker. Moreover, research highlights a lack of moral compass among the younger generation. Where's my bloody cow? Contributing factor to the increase in violent crimes. Many individuals in this generation look to institutions such as schools, the government, and even the church for. Excuse me, you know where my kettle is. Questions about the trustworthiness of these institutions. God bless. Well, I can't call this place. I'm fucking off. I don't care. Press Q. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Here we go. Ooh! Ooh, she's here! She's here! Get the door, Felix! Get the door! Good evening. My name's Marina. We talked earlier on the phone. Oh, Good yes. Evening. And God bless. I am Father Matthias Martin, at your service. Hello, Marie. Oh, hello, Marina. You okay? Hello, Father. Please forgive me if I come across as impolite. I'm not particularly devout. Perhaps I lack some of the etiquette. Oh, maybe I should have thought about covering my head with a scarf. No worries. Oh, thank you. You know, I didn't expect such a warm and welcoming reception. I've always been a bit of an outsider. I tend to stand out, and it's made it hard for me to blend in with the other parishioners. But I don't want to take up too much of your time. Father, I find myself in a delicate situation. I'm not sure how to proceed. I've heard nothing but good things about you, and I believe you're the only one who could help me and provide a blessing. Oh, is there anyone else here? I apologize. Perhaps I should keep my voice down. I tend to speak louder when I become excited. Don't worry, we're alone. Well, that's a relief. I realise it might seem odd, but you see, I value privacy and discretion greatly, and there's a reason for that. I still recall my last confession vividly. The priest had trouble hearing. I had to speak louder. And when I finished confessing, the person waiting couldn't help but burst into laughter. She was clearly eavesdropping. You could probably imagine how uncomfortable that was. What's that I sense? Strawberries? Oh yes, the team must be ready. Is she just changed outfits? Such a lovely place. This isn't who you are. She didn't have hair like shot, did she? Live all by themselves. Must be terribly lonely. Is that what she was wearing? I'm trying to keep things simple. You have quite the taste in furniture and everything is so clean. 
By the way, if you don't mind me asking, Father, may I pose a question? Maybe a bit nosy, but I'm genuinely curious. Do you priests indulge in... I mean, things like smoking, drinking a glass of wine, perhaps listening to music, something other than a church organ? Some do, some don't. I'm rather moderate. Oh, Father, forgive me for actually asking such a trivial question. I don't wish to distract you from your duties, and I already feel as though I'm intruding on your privacy. I'm here to discuss the reason for my visit. I'm at a loss for words, Father. I don't know how to express this. Stupid me. And I rehearsed it dozens of times at home. You see, I feel utterly helpless, vulnerable. I don't know how much longer I can endure this. But I'd rather be blunt, Father. It concerns you. Me? Dear Lord, in what way? Ever since you arrived at our parish, things have changed. And I resent it. Before, everything was ordinary. But now, it's you I must see every Sunday. Standing before the altar, your arms open, looking out over the congregation. All my life, I have been devoted to the Virgin Mary. I prayed the rosary every night, and even aspired to enter the convent. But then, you showed up. From that day on, I couldn't bring myself to attend Mass and see you. The few times I have been to church all these years, I couldn't help but feel this overwhelming rush of emotions. I would start crying, and perhaps people believed I was on fire for Jesus. When in fact, oh, how can I say this? I know it's not right, but the truth is that I love you, Father, with all my be with all my whole being, and from the bottom of my heart. I don't know what to say. Stage one, temptation. Temptation is the urge to sin, whether through persuasion or the promise of pleasure, which can be external or internal, affecting one's willpower. It may stem from our inherent inclination to evil due to the original sin or from the influence of the devil. However, temptation itself is not sin. Only when will consents does not. Uh, does sin occur. Well, I've finished chapter two, strawberry tea. Okay. You know, this is a, a delicate situation. I'm considering your feelings, and I don't want to be callous, but it's just not possible. What can I say? I'm not good at discussing romantic love between a man and a woman. I can preach to you about the love of God. I understand, Father. I understand. Oh, I feel so naive. I shouldn't have come here. I'm My bed's right here, bro. This embarrassment. You shouldn't talk like that. Same. There's no shame in loving someone. But not like this. We can still be friends in Christ. Oh, spare me that talk. I don't need a sermon. Pour me a glass of wine and I'll be on my way. Wow. Pour me a glass of wine I'll be on my way. I'll punch you in your head, mate. Glass of wine. Oh. She's, that's why she's wearing the lipstick and stuff. Why am I not going to look in her purse? Oh. As if she's trying to tempt me. I will not be tempted. I am a man of God. Where's my wine? Where is it? I have to go to the kitchen to find it. Alright, I'll be back shortly, my dear. Oh. Where's my bloody wine, though? What's your turn? Oh. I have wine. Where? What? Oh, thank you. This sweet red wine is exactly what I needed. And what a treat it is to enjoy in such charming company. Why are you looking at me like this? Do I seem pitiful? Like a desperate woman trying to get what she wants? Oh, don't worry, Father. I'm just having a lot of fun with you. Never dare to think that. Oh, Father, you're too serious. Lighten up a bit. Tell me, have you ever been in love? Surely you must have had your heart fluttering at some point. With your dark hair and those blue eyes. I don't remember. 
What kind of answer is that? I don't remember. Ha 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 You make me laugh. Come on, share some memories with me. No one ever forgets their first love. The first kiss. The first night of passion. What was she like? I bet she had a hold on your heart. Enough, please finish your drinking. And then what? What do you have in mind? Do you have some exciting secrets to share? Ha 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 ha! I'm just kidding, Father. Don't mind me. Perhaps I've had too much to drink. But I must say, this wine is so sweet and delightful. Is this what you use for Holy Mass? No wonder people, co people keep coming back for more. Oh, why is it hot all of a sudden? My oh my. What were we talking about? Oh yes, about your first time. What was it like? Wait, wait, don't answer me. I should have assumed that by now. You are a virgin! Virgin! <laughs> yes, that's it. That's why you're so shy and dismissive. I should have known. You are a priest, devoted to the church, and you've never had a woman. But tell me, you ever wonder what it's like to indulge in the desires of flesh? Such a pity you are a priest. Shut up! Oh! Okay, father, what are you doing? Okay, well Oh father, do I have to blur that? I think so And I think I have to mute the sounds as well possibly I'm gonna have to blur this <laughs> Oopsie. Well, father, stage two, venial sin. Venial sin refers to minor offence or one committed without full reflection or consent. Although it weakens the sinner's connection with God, it does not signify a deliberate rejection of God and therefore doesn't entirely obstruct the reception of sanctifying grace. Exactly. What I was thinking. Dong. Oh, father! That was the last what have you thing done? I expected. But in retrospect, Felix always was a bit nosy. He saw us, thank goodness he didn't wake her up. Good damn it. Felix! Felix! We need to talk about what you witnessed. I understand. I'm not here to pass judgment. The desires of flesh have tempted me numerous times, but I have always strived to resist them. It's important not to let this become a recurring pattern. Is this a one-time occurrence, or have you experienced such a lapse in your resolve before? I'd rather discuss that with my father, Confessor. Very well. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to rest. I am tired. Wait, I'm concerned. Oh, you're worried that I might disclose this incident? What purpose would that serve? The best step is to seek guidance from someone you trust deeply. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not here to judge you. I, too, have my own sins. Please excuse me. I'm tired. God bless you. Uh... Right, come on. Time to wake up, mate. Get up. Oh, god damn it. If only I weren't a priest. We could have been together. I had to send her home. Marina? Marina? Hey, you need to wake up. Where's she step? Wait, what? Oh, father. There she lay, lifeless, her gaze fixed on the ceiling. Her expression was one of terror, blood oozing from her mouth. What could have caused this? What terrible chain of events could have led to this? I trembled, overwhelmed by an uncontainable fear. The entire house was spinning with me. I was in deep trouble. What oh scary -os. Well, 
That's why you don't have I sex before marriage. Demented, gripped with horror and bewilderment. All my efforts to bring life back into her body were in vain. Only hours later I found some comfort in prayer. I had to think straight and act accordingly. God damn it. Okay. There's blood coming out of my mouth. How did it happen? I should cover a body with a white bed sheet. Shit. Alright, we need to remove everything of hers from the house. Ugh. Okay. We need to cover up this murder. Is what I'm doing right? Probably. Wait. With a white bed sheet. I've got the white bed sheet now. Yeah. I won't call the police. Let's have a look inside the bag. Crap. Alright, let's get to know more about her. I've had enough! It's the third time I was saved by people after attempting to jump off the central bridge. But why would you care? The beatings, the humiliation I endured at your hand. It's all coming to an end tonight. I'm leaving. You told me countless times that you'd be better off if I were dead. But I won't give you that satisfaction. Instead, I'll leave you. I'm going somewhere far away. Somewhere you'll never find me. Rot in hell. So we could fake her, like, give her death to someone else. Again? What do you want? I apologise for barging in like this. You always insist on informing me about the Friday night vigil in the case you forget. Oh shit, I've, you know. God, there's an enchanting fragrance of roses. It's so exquisite. Where is it coming from? Ah, I know. It's from her, isn't it? Examining from her delightful flesh. I'll spare me the pretense of not understanding. I know what you did. Did you enjoy it? Was it your first experience? Oh, is she still here? Perhaps you'd like to share her with me? Come on. Showing us a virtue in this insatiable world, isn't it? Ha 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 ha. Why the sudden pallor in your face? Ah, I see. She's dead, isn't she? You're the one who ended her life. You're a murderer! Congratulations. You're a murderer! That's enough. You're alright. I if you'd like to accompany me to the convent for the midnight vigil. But it seems you're exhausted. I'll leave you to rest. I'll head to the convent. We'll reconvene in the morning. And please don't think about the little incident. It happens. We're all human after all. And please forgive me if I upset you. May God bless you. Christ, that was too close. Oh God. I have to do something I have to bury her. If Felix were to uncover this, it would be catastrophic. Me with a woman in my bed is one thing, but a lifeless body? And I cannot in good conscience leave her here. Find something to put her in. The bathtub. Oh god. Who smashed it? God, everything's happening. Alright. Oh, wait, there's a baby. Wait, what? Uh, uh. I got you. I have to find something to put her in. Okay, well, it's not that. Uh. Find something to put her in. I have nothing. Oh, wait. Oh. 
Okay, we removed the clutter from this chest. Unwillingly, I found myself ensnared in a cruel game. Where did Seemingly all the blood come from? There wasn't that much. God, perhaps the devil. What choices did I have? I struggled to banish the unsettling notion that I might have, in some way, played a role in her death. Convinced of my innocence, and determined to remain steadfast in my faith, I proceeded to search for a way to handle Marina's body in the most Christian manner possible. Set her on fire. Mortal sin. Mortal sin is a grave offence against God's law. It involves full knowledge and deliberate consent. The servers... No. It severs the sinner's relationship with God and deprives the soul of sanctifying grace necessary for salvation. Until repentance and absolution are sought through the sacraments of the church. 